A tecnologia muda também o universo da moda. A moda hoje tem os seus ciclos acelerados, todo mundo quer falar sobre ela online, como até gente que incorpora a cultura do do it yourself dentro da esfera da moda. tecnologia está transformando o universo da moda. São inúmeros os blogs de moda de rua que fotografam as pessoas com seus looks andando pela cidade. Hoje a pessoa não se contenta só em ficar bem vestida, ela quer compartilhar o seu look na internet. O ciclo se acelerou justamente pela facilidade de cópia que a tecnologia traz. Até a própria cultura do faça você mesmo já está chegando na moda também do ponto de vista tecnológico. I think the technology isn't a thing that you can like choose to be a part of or not be a part of anymore. It's just you have to use a different set of tools than you did 100 years ago. Technology is a new way to communicate and to showcase your work. There has to be time and love and care put into it just like any other work. It's just a new medium to communicate. Hoje um dos gêneros de blog que se multiplica cada vez mais são os blogs de moda de rua. Alguém pega uma câmera e sai fotografando a forma como as pessoas estão vestidas andando nas ruas. Será que esses blogs realmente representam a rua? Ou será que eles representam uma classe de fashionistas globalizados que acabam seguindo as mesmas tendências? There's a, a huge trend at the moment for street photographers to shoot during Fashion Week. People outside of the industry, I think, are very curious as to how the people that run the fashion industry look. I sort of feel like those people's voices are heard through the publications that they are working for. So I'm more interested in finding people a little bit outside that inner circle. Most days that I'm out shooting, I find something that I really relate to and that I'm inspired by. But when I first started, it would take some explaining and people were quite taken aback if I stopped them on the street. And now it's almost like, you're a street stop photographer. I understand that. Okay, here's my pose. A imprensa de moda passa pelos mesmos dilemas da imprensa em geral. Então dá para ver vários blogs que acabam pautando e influenciando as revistas e dá para ver também o contrário, que são várias revistas pautando e influenciando os blogs. I've seen quite a few editorials that are almost like mock street style shoots. One of the reasons blogs are a popular format uh, for all sorts of different content, but in fashion also, is that there's uh, no filter between the person who's creating the content and the reader. In a lot of traditional media, you feel like everything has been edited so much that you're not really necessarily getting that true voice. Sites como o Go Try It On propõem que você pode compartilhar a todo momento o seu look. Você pega o seu celular, tira uma foto do seu look, posta na internet e a partir dali uma comunidade de pessoas vai te dizer se o seu look está legal ou não. I would often um, get ready and then text a picture of myself to my sister and to get her opinion. And she's um, actually finishing law school and would tell me, I can't, I can't be bothered, leave me alone. And I was like, God, there should be some sort of marketplace where users can come and go and get that feedback in real time. You take a photo, you tell us about it and you share. And you could even blur your face if you wanted to. And then you create your outfit page. These are the pants I'm actually wearing trying them on in the store. The community told me to buy it. If you wanted to um, check out some in individuals from around the world, you can look at their outfits and she's going to something like a family thing. So you can vote wear it or change it. I don't really like these pants, so I'm gonna vote change it. I'm gonna say this doesn't do you justice. The idea has always been around um, trying to create the experience you have when you're in the fitting room and you come out and a random woman comes by and says, Oh, I like that. We 
We've tried to really create a community that um, appreciates honesty, sincerity, and, and tactfulness, and we reward people for you know having those good behaviors. A lot of these other blogs focus a lot on inspiration, which is great, but then I find myself saying, well, that looks so great. How do I do it for me? How do I make it work for me? And so um, kind of that next step is where we, we're trying to hone in. Why not leverage kind of the real knowledge that is out there across the world when it comes to fashion and basically be able to kind of tap into that and give that to the masses. Our favorite is, this is distracting. That's our phrase for, it, it didn't work for you. So. Tecnologia muda também o universo da moda. Se a gente for pensar, a moda hoje tem os seus ciclos acelerados, todo mundo quer falar sobre ela online, e o mais interessante é só você olhar, por exemplo, para um prêmio como o VMA, que as pessoas estão tão interessadas nos artistas que ganharam o prêmio musical, quanto nas roupas das pessoas que vão lá receber os prêmios. Existem vários projetos que tentam incorporar a tecnologia dentro da própria peça de vestuário. Então dá pra gente ver hoje, desde o topo da moda, como o Hussein Chalayan, que cria aqueles vestidos tecnológicos que se mexem, até a gente que incorpora a cultura do do it yourself dentro da esfera da moda. I like to use conductive thread to do embroidery. I like to incorporate digital imagery into uh, knitting and fiber arts. I recently created a line of laser lace. It's laser distress t-shirt. And I like to put electronics in clothes. And you can see here the LEDs from the TV Be Gone kit poke out the lapel and can turn off the television. So when I activate it with this switch on the zipper, so that all I have to do when I want the TVs to turn off at the restaurant or bar is unzip or zip my jacket. These are custom printed circuit boards and there's a microcontroller on the back. So each one is kind of like a miniature computer. I was trying to think of like fun LED accent um, lighting for a wedding and I'm a bridesmaid. So I made these this little like ruffly shoe clip, but then I added some LEDs to make your toes light up. Just do it background in fashion design, but all of my favorite fashion designers were designers who kind of pushed the boundaries of what could be done with fashion. I went to Parsons School of Design where fashion is really important, but I'm really into like open source culture and free information sharing and fashion's a bitch. Wearable technology encompasses a, a lot of stuff, and I, I specifically focus on do-it-yourself wearable technology. And there's all sorts of liability and testing that you're not used to having with fashion. So right now the designs that I have that are for electronic clothing are all do-it-yourself designs. Maybe down the line you'll see some TV be gone, consumer available products, but for now I just give away the instructions. Uma das principais pensadoras da moda no mundo de hoje é a Johanna Blake. Ela vê a importância da cópia no processo da moda como sendo essencial. Quanto mais as pessoas copiarem os estilos, melhor é para as marcas e até mesmo para o ciclo da moda. Na indústria da moda, a cópia sempre foi o que todo mundo está fazendo, porque foi possível fazer isso. A razão que há trends de moda é porque é legalmente viável para as pessoas copiar um outro. Há lugares no mundo que querem passar uma legislação proibindo a cópia do design dos vestidos e das roupas. Eu acho que é apenas uma das coisas que poderia acontecer na indústria. E o meu medo é que vai haver mais inovação na indústria da fashion se alguns grandes players conseguem bloquear os designs muito icônicos e básicos. Eu acredito que a assinatura, a trademark, é um aspecto muito importante da indústria da fashion. Ela deveria ser protegida. But once you move beyond the mark and start talking about other aspects of the brand, it becomes much more dangerous. Do you think it's actually possible 
that innovation can come out of the fast fashion market? Sometimes what the fast fashion uh, industry is offering is not innovation at all. Instead, they're offering a certain look, a certain idea, at a price point that is acceptable to a very large population who would not have been able to buy that from Dior. <laughs> <laughs> However, with uh, companies like Target, they have invited very famous designers like Karl Lagerfeld and most recently the designers from the Sony. They've invited these designers to come in to their stores to make <laughs> copies of their own work at a price point they never would have considered in the past. I think that's a wonderful idea. A gente levava muito mais tempo para algo que era visto na passarela chegar nas lojas. Hoje, na medida em que o desfile acontece, naquele momento já tem alguém pensando em como transformar aquele modelo numa peça física para ser vendida em algum lugar. These amazing pieces of creation, and you see them like in Barney's hanging there, and then it almost seems like the next time you go back to have a look, they're on sale because something new is coming in, and that is quite overwhelming. It's good for the fashion industry, obviously, because they move a lot of product. But I'd say generally, it's good for consumers as well. Forty years ago, you could tell exactly how much money people made by what they were wearing. Now you walk down the street in Los Angeles, and you'll be hard pressed. You know who's rich, who's poor. Instead, people have uh, tools at hand to create a very sophisticated look for very little money. And so it's become a much more democratized kind of experience and sphere. A relação entre tecnologia e moda hoje enfrenta um dilema. Tem gente achando que o ciclo da moda está indo depressa demais e quer criar formas de reduzir isso. Por outro lado, tem um monte de novas mídias, blogueiros e assim por diante que abraçaram a moda como se fosse um novo rock. É muito interessante ver para onde essa mistura de precaução com empolgação vai levar o futuro da moda. Inspired by looks that maybe come up from Tokyo or come up from Paris. Before, there would be a significant lag time in order to be inspired that way, whereas now it's instantaneous. That pace stifles people's creativity. I even see that with blogging. When your blog gains traction and when you know people are reading it every day, you, you suddenly start to feel a pressure to create more and more and more content. You have to be quite conscious so that you don't just feed into more and more and more. The culture of online video is a big part of fashion, right? You see fashion shows online, you see fashion photos online, and then for the do-it-yourself type, I'm going to show you how to make sparkly shoes. I think it gets um, younger people online really inspired to start making things themselves instead of just buying things from the store. Being able to express yourself by what you wear is really a very sort of basic human need. We tend to devalue our important fashion as we think of it as fluff, you know, as something unnecessary and extra. But actually, it's how we telegraph who we are to the world, what our priorities are, what we think about ourselves. And humans are very good at picking up those signals, whether they want to acknowledge that or not.